Let me see the tower. I can't see it. This is the the dice tower. It's made to look like the the gate in Jurassic Park. That's really cute. <laughs> I love Scream and I love Jurassic Park. <laughs> What would you say is your favorite part of the acting process? Rehearsing, putting your costume on for the first time, stepping on set for the first time. But then I also want not necessarily your least favorite, but a part of the process where you see room to grow for yourself and an opportunity to try something new. Wow. Um, I think the most exciting part is when I read a script and I know it's written by someone who can really, is a storyteller, you know, who's the real deal. Um, and then I love doing plays and rehearsals. I love that. I like the research and the world. Um, and then sometimes I'll share with you, and I'm like, oh, I wish, I mean, I'm glad there, that people go see it, but I wish that like they only retain the memory in their dreams and then they forgot about all the, the fanfare stuff. Then that could be <laughs> ignored. Because <laughs> um, a part of me, it's weird being an actor, so this is a paradox, right? Like I'm, I'm like embarrassed now. Like I do, like what I do is very exposing, but then it's also very private at the same time. So, um, my Gemini moon has me doing two things. Can you give me one audition high and then also one audition low and tell me what you learned from that low you, that you were able to apply to future auditions? I have always been terrible at auditioning. Um, and I think it was because I'd done so many independent movies in the, in the 90s and I'd carried so many movies. And so you go into an empty room and you just have to like all of a sudden mime something or pretend it's not there. And I would get ashamed and I was terrible. But so I'd say Party Girl was probably my best audition because Daisy, who directed it, um, came, her mom was a theater actress. And so we would just like read it and she knew just to hang out, right? And not put me on the spot. Um, I don't like feeling put on the spot. So I think um, that was my favorite audition and my worst audition. There's been a few where I go in and then the actors are like, what are you doing here? Like, uh, I'm like, I, 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 I'm, I'm auditioning for this. They're like, what, you have to audition? And then I'm like, oh, should I just leave? Um, <laughs> and then I go in and have, you know, like, why, why am I here? Do you guys wanna meet me? Or are you serious about casting me? So I kind of stopped doing that. It's like, if you want to cast me, you can cast me. It's weird, you know, some of these auditions are, um, yeah, not very comfortable. There's a real world zombie outbreak. You can pick two past co-stars to team up with. Who do you choose that'll give you the best chance of surviving? Triple H, who else? Um, You know, Lisa Kudrow, I'd say Lisa would be really good to have. She's a great, she's really smart. She, she makes light of any situation. Um, yeah, I think she would be really, really great. What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new episode of Collider Ladies Night with an absolute legend, Parker Posey, I cannot even express how excited I am to have you on this show right now. Oh, come on. Thank you. 
You studied at SUNY Purchase, and I always love asking this about the uh, the school experience when you're studying a craft like acting. What is something that you learned there that you still find yourself using and referring back to today? But then also, what is something that all the schooling in the world never could have prepared you for when you hit your first set? I see the biggest thing I learned at college was like script analysis and relationship to the text. So you just like read a line and... Uh, if the first year of the first semester of acting, we, we read this book by Boleslavsky on acting and you would read a sentence and then you would look up from the page and just say that sentence. And if the teacher said she didn't believe you, you'd have to like look down and read it and then look up and read it again. It was, it was maddening. Um, and then we had a script analysis and checkoff teacher named Joan Potter, who I loved so much, and she was a wonderful teacher. So when you replace and you look at all the transitions that happen with a chunk of dialogue, like say four or five lines, you go like, what, what is happening underneath it? It's almost like you start to diagram it, right? And you give it a place in whatever, if it's like... Um, some kind of tempo or some kind of, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, um, well, you give intentions and what you want, uh, and subtext. Um, so that's fun. And I'll, I, I'll always do that. You come to set with a lot of people and it, it almost feels like, um, it takes a little while to get used to wanting to not wanting to know everybody's name and their job and, and what they're doing, um, giving up, you know, letting go of, of things to create, to be in your own kind of world. Um, and the different relationships to, to that, to the different people on, on sets, whether it's, you know, your DP, um, continuity. Um, I have a, you know, I want to make sure my lines are good so I can perform. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different jobs and then, but also so many, every job is so different. So there's, um, it's a real collaboration. It's really, it's great. It's like a circus or something. Richard Langlater on Dazed and Confused, one of your very first big movies. Yes. Sometimes. Looking back on that experience, what now makes you think? I am so glad that one of my first big feature films was on that set led by him. I was such a fan of slacker and movies of in the 90s that were, I mean, it was it just, it was a real movement back then. So, um Working in Austin and feeling like, uh, and with the cast, I can tell you, it just felt like a, we all just belonged together. And that kind of closeness is so, and chemistry, you know, between people and actors, you, you can just see it, you can feel it. And um, there's a lot of individuals there, a lot of like authentic uh, people. Pretty incredible how that cast, it's such a large ensemble and look at where the large majority of you have gone since then. Yeah. It, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. And you know, the casting director cast Fast Times at Richmond High. He was also the inspiration for David Rabe's Hurley Burley. There's a casting director um, who's the lead of that. and He does a lot of blow and he's just got a big heart and he's and that was um, that was based on uh, Don was the inspiration for that, and so he had a huge heart, and he loved all of us and remained, you know, kept in touch with with a lot of us and was so supportive. There's another keyword there. Anytime you say casting director, I will light up and love that answer because we don't give casting directors nearly enough credit ever. I know. Did you see that um, documentary about casting directors? About Where do I watch this? It was on HBO, like maybe in the last 10 years, about Marion Doherty and 
Ellen Lewis and a, and a few casting directors of um, the Scorsese, Woody Allen uh, time of filmmaking and the importance of them and what they, you know, they're kind of like matchmakers. There's a real talent to it. I can't not ask you about working with Christopher Guest. So oh my God. I was wondering, do you remember the very first moment that first signaled to you that Christopher Guest wasn't just a good director you were going to get the opportunity to work with once, but that he was a collaborator you were going to want to keep coming back to? You know, these things, it's like family. You don't like make a decision about it. You're just in the the organism of it. You know, it just it just felt so natural. I met him and, um, I was doing a, um, and back then I was following plane tickets. So I had an audition for a recurring part on Murphy Brown TV show with Candace Bergen. And I didn't get cast in that, but there was a call to meet Chris Guest and his producing partner, Karen Murphy. So I'd convinced Lauren Michaels that Connie Conehead needed friends in the Coneheads, the movie, and Karen Murphy had called Lauren Michaels and asked if he knew anyone who could play 18 and improvise. And luckily, I wasn't a fan of Spinal Tap because I didn't like heavy metal music. So I didn't even get that movie, right? I just went in and when I met Chris, I sat across the table with him and just hung out. And it was very easy and... Um, he said, I want to show you this, this documentary, I think it was from PBS, but it was about, um, opera backstage, um, actors and stuff. And, and he just said, can you, what would you do with this and this part? And it just went it was like, I think two days later I was cast, like it just felt right. There's something just so interesting about really, um, trusting the other person in your you know, that you're in those hands. And for, for me, at least, I'm not the, in, in a way, we do write our own dialogue in the research. You think of like with Meg Swan, like lots of people had dogs back then and they were like surrogate children for the, the best new show was initially called Dogland, And, um, and it did seem like dogs were just, people were having dogs and not babies. Um, and yeah, you just kind of glean and research and and think of what dog owners are and how they, you know, you have a point of view, I guess, right? Um, and then, you know, I worked with Michael Hitchcock. He played my husband. So I show up and he just does his thing and you find your character and you're just in the moment and you play it out. So in the beginning, it was like, really terrifying. I didn't want to watch dailies and uh, we were working in Austin and I said, I'll come and just, we're all ordering, well, everyone's going to be in the whatever room down the hall. We ordered Chinese food or whatever. Um, and I did, you know, like kind of like this. And it was so interesting to watch all, you know, back then film, it was a seven minute mag. So you would improvise and do the scene for seven minutes, just like free form, whatever. And then he would come in and do medium shot of the same scene. You'd really forget what you did, but he was able to, you know, write an outline and make it so specifically funny. But that you, you don't think about being funny and then you, that, you are. It was such a surprise and a relief. So it was, yeah, it was great. Let's get into Bo. So a little bit of a two-parter for signing on. Did you get the full script when you first committed? And if you did or if you didn't and only got your part, what would you say was your biggest burning question for Ari before jumping into production? So I met Ari on Zoom before we started. So I got to meet him and, you know, gush about Hereditary, which I found just one of the most exciting films. And, you know, there are a few films that have that kind of magic that give you something so new and so uh, visceral. Um, so <laughs> it leave you with that kind of feeling, which he did. Um, 
So he said, well, I, 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 I really want you for this. I uh, wanted to work with you, been a fan. Joaquin wants you. Let's do it. You. I'm like, this sounds great. Well, you'll, you'll have to read it. There's some, there's, there's this, it's, it's basically one scene, but there's a lot that, that happens in the scene. And um, I'll let you, you know, I'll give it to you. And so I was uh, excited to read it. And, um, you know, what struck me the most was how smart it was. You know, it really felt like its own. It reminded me of those books that I read in high school with like Kafka and Camus and these like thinkers that were looking at the human condition in a way that was, um, you know, that you that you look at in high school and you, when you read those kinds of books. Um, so I'm like, wow, this is really a voice of his generation. Don't know of another filmmaker who's able to get away with something like this. So, wow, good for him. This is exciting. My questions, I didn't have questions except I, I started laughing and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to do this, but yes, I'm in. This is like an amusement park ride. I'm, I'm totally in. This is going to be scary, but I always do the things that are, you know, going to the unknown. If you're going to go into the unknown and something, whether it's, you know, like my mom had open heart surgery last year and I was there for that. Like these things that are really scary, um, but you're, you're so much stronger for having gone through them and, and um, doing something brave. Um and in a way, it felt like, you know, I'm I'm middle I'm a middle aged woman. Like what? I'm now I'm doing this, like this, <laughs> this. I mean, there's something just too funny about it. In the 30 years I've had, and then there's something really sweet about um, having a young filmmaker, a real auteur, you know, want me because that is for the part and because it's it really is a whole game that I don't even know how how it works but I know that it's it's not easy to get cast um even if directors want you so so I just feel really lucky this feels like so unexpected and out of the box and like um but I was yeah I was I was nervous I was walking around like you know, touching sleeves of people and, hi, how are you? Because I wanted them to do that to me, you know, when you do that. So I'm like, hi. It's just like, no, will you just <laughs> give me a pet? Like, ah. I wanted to end with one big, broad question. You could choose a scene in Bo or anything you've done, but I've gotten in the habit of asking this because, you know, in this industry, we give awards to other people, but I feel like nobody says good job to themselves nearly enough. Oh. So looking back at everything you've done, is there a particular scene that comes to mind that makes you say to yourself, like, damn, I'm proud of what I did there? Well, I just did a play, so I can say that, you know, theater is like, and working on stage is, 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 is so, is so physical on the inside as well as the outside. I can't explain it other than there's a whole story that you're containing, right? And collaborating with other people on, on stage and, you know, adapting constantly and being in the moment, right. And kind of riding the waves of, of the dialogue and these little changes. So it's like, you really, you use a lot of muscle in that. So, I mean, I just finished the matinee yesterday and flew directly after Again, what is this edge all about? Why does that, I, I mean, that's just my path. That's also like so great to know that like, oh yeah, that's part of, that's my way of going into the, you know, it just kind of unfolds like that, which we get older and we get to know ourselves more. And so we get to prepare more and make it as graceful and as we can. Um 
but it's a lot of work and I am proud of that. Thank you. That's really sweet. One of the things that I say about, that I think about too, that is that how much actors get that feedback of like, oh, that was great. You know, you were great in that. You were great in that. Um, good, good job. Good job. It's like, I wish we had something in our culture that had that to everybody because we don't, um, we don't have that and people need to be supported in what they do. So you're doing a really good job too. And um, yeah, I love that supportive gesture. It's very sweet. Thank you for saying thank that. You. Thank you for taking the time today to be on Ladies Night. I appreciate it. Yay. And thank you for Scream. Let's hope, let's hope that, yeah, we're going to make it happen. Always, <laughs> always root for her to be alive, no matter what that does. Always. Happen.